like Luke. He's behind the camera. He doesn't know I'm doing this. I'm going to tell him to pick the additives he wants me to use, and I'm going to go for it. You guys ready for this? Challenge accepted. A curveball right there. Do you want a, a dark board or a light board underneath these colors? I say light. Dang it. <laughs> Wow, geez, that looks cool. That's really neat, right? <laughs> yes. It looks like a high-end stone, man. I mean, I never would have picked that palette, Luke. I, I didn't agree with it, but I, I like how it came out a lot. We just created an abalone recipe. <laughs> Take off my thinking cap, because this is a no-brainer. Do you guys argue about color? Maybe you have a contractor that's making fun of the color palette you want on your countertops. Maybe you as a spouse are fighting, how do we get these colors in our kitchen? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that no matter what. Have you ever had a challenge that was difficult to make that customer happy with the color palette they chose? Let's see how difficult it really is. Here we go. Let's see what Mike can make with this. Okay, and just because I can, you get those colors, Mike. All right, Luke, what'd you throw at me, man? A curveball right there, all right? Interesting. You know, this color's funny, man. It, it, could, it could look fake in a piece if you use it too much, but I, I got an idea. I love the white, man. I wish you gave me some black spray paint, but you didn't. Maybe it's too dark for Mrs. DIY homeowner. No worries, we got some black metallic. I'll make up for it. White metallic, bronze galaxy glitter. You know, that's an interesting choice because glitter with epoxy can be amazing. If you look at this right here, this is just glitter over black and that's how it comes out. But if you notice, I don't have any other colors in that because the glitter can get drowned. It can actually get buried underneath all the color. That's why we have the dusts, the diamond dust and the gold dust. They'll float and come up to the surface. These want to sink, but I have an idea of how to make them show through, even though you gave me all these colors. You guys ready? Here we go. So we got a dark board and a light board. You could pretty much make any color out of these two and he chose light. That will definitely and drastically change the way that this piece looks. So keep that in mind when choosing your base, that's kind of the feel of that whole piece. So we're gonna go light, let's try it. That means peace. Okay, what are the rules in doing an exotic pour? The reason I do an exotic pour with a color palette such as this is because you can't go wrong. It gives you a beautiful look without even trying. You don't need this crazy artistic technique. Okay, I'm gonna have some fun right now AKA my helmet head. We need about six ounces per square foot when I do an exotic pour. Why? Let me show you, come, on, come over here take off my thinking cap, because this is a no-brainer. So there's a couple of pieces I did here, and I did them in a thicker pour. And you can see these have laid out like absolute glass. They are super flat. I love this white marble piece that we've done. Um, and we used more product. And the reason I use more product is I know I'm gonna do our ultimate top coat on top of each of these. So I used all of my product in one single pour, so I could get it to flow out really, really beautifully without a bunch of extra effort. But that means I tape the edges off so that I could pull those edges later and not have it all flow off because I'm using more than recommended. 
Now I'm gonna do the ultimate top coat on these so it's okay that I could just sand any imperfection out of them even if there was one. But when I look at these, they are like glass. I won't need a bunch of extra effort because I used excess material. That's a pro tip. That's how pros are gonna get their samples to look beautiful without a bunch of extra work. You could really crank these things out using this method. You're welcome in advance. Pro tip, when you want everything to flow out when you're doing an exotic pour, heat the material up. I've set this in front of a space heater to get it nice and warm so it's very viscous, it's very thin. And I don't even know if I'm using that word correctly. I think viscous means thick, but in this case, it means thin. Viscous means honey-like. Oh, it's very non-viscous. It's very watery, it's very flowy. If you want your epoxy to be flowy, Heat it up in front of a space heater and you'll get flowy epoxy. This is the most labor intensive part of this whole process uh, is mixing. You know, you're just putting those colors in the cups and mixing it up. Now you've seen my other videos, or have you? I actually do a lot of other techniques. I, I make it look like granite. I make it look like marble. I do uh, exotic pours like this. I do uh, sprays that look like stone automatically. I do marble sprays and granite sprays. All kinds of different effects are achievable. You can mimic mother nature easily by watching Stone Coat Countertop videos, and I hope you're getting value out of this one. If you are, be sure to hit that like button. It helps us get higher in the queue. We're a small business. We're right here in the US of A. We started on our dining room table, and now we have over 30 employees full time we put to work, so we would appreciate that like button. You got this. Now I had a little residual fire orange on my paint stick and you can see what that's done to our white metallic. It's really giving it that pearl look. I think that's gorgeous, man. Okay, you ready for this, Luke? Oh yeah. Here goes your color palette, bottoms up, man. There's some Lagoon, some of that fire orange and you can see some of that uh, glitter coming through. What color was that? Black and white. Oh yeah, that's right, I made my own silver. Uh, I think it's gonna be kind of neat, man. This might be a Jerry Garcia countertop here. You know who that is? I don't. Luke does not know who Jerry Garcia is. This is dating me, guys. Do you guys know who Jerry Garcia is? He liked bears. I am so curious how this is gonna turn out. <laughs> I think it's gonna be cool, man. You like that challenge? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna just dump these little cups over and use all of this as my wash coat. My bucket of fun right there. All I'm doing is scooping up some of that dry powder that uh, splashed out of my bucket, so I'm just making sure that it's all coated. I'm just getting the whole thing a little bit wet so that the exotic pour will slip and slide over the whole thing. And I think this is truly going to be an exotic pour. I think I'm gonna put this on my tilt table too. I love my tilt table. You guys could find these right on our website. Uh, me and my buddy invented this thing and it makes tilting a one man operation. I don't have uh, my brother right here with me today. So I can't, I can't tilt this by myself too easily. So I'm gonna set it up here. Okay, I'm gonna get it centered on that before I get a bunch of materials on this. 
and then I'm going to use my spray, can, spray paint cans as my shims. So I just got my spray paint cans because I put this up on plywood, this tilt table. So the spray paint cans are a little di distance away. That's just fine. I'm going to pour this and then if it were to get heavy and move, it's going to stop there at my spray paint cans. Okay, so we'll just go just like that and we'll pour this out and then we'll get it level afterwards. Here we go. Okay, time for the question of the day. What did you expect out of this color recipe that I chose for Mike? I just picked a bunch of random colors and I was honestly surprised with how it came out. Let me know in the comments below what you think. I'm gonna do a ring pour here. That's gonna be pretty neat, man. I'm just gonna break any surface tension here. Well, this is like an abalone shell, man. Yeah, man. That's really helping. And doing that final ring pour over it while it was, uh, you know, I, I did that initial ring pour, but that, that gave it a tighter little ribbon in the middle that really gives it a cool reflection. Boy, I think that's money. I like it, man. I like it a lot, actually. That looks like a, a abalone shell. We just created an abalone recipe. I mean, if you're trying to make an abalone shell, I would say this did it. Wow. All right guys, what I'm gonna do is move this over to our drying area and let this set up and then I'll pull that tape off after a while and let it roll over the edges. But right now I wanna leave the tape on to capture as much of that epoxy as we can so these effects retain right there on top and they don't flow over those edges. That's a pro tip of when you do an exotic pour, how to get that look to stay right on the top. I love this so much, I don't want it to change, man. Look at that, oh, man. Oh, dang. Isn't that beautiful? That is really pretty. Wow. Is that only metallics? Uh, there's some spray paint in it. Jeez, that looks cool. I like it, man. It's, Me too. It's neat. The light catches it really nice. It like yeah. lights up. It looks like a high-end stone, man. Okay, guys, it's been a couple of hours. I'm gonna pull this tape. And I really like how this is starting to dry. This looks, this looks gorgeous, man. Luke, is this what you thought it would come out to? Not at all, but I'm surprisingly pleased regardless. We pulled it off, man. Okay, <laughs> check this out. So this edge still isn't fully coated, but when you, when you have it pouring over something that's catching those drips, I could take this goo now and just rub it in those edges and it'll start to match really well. Looks like an onyx abalone. All right, let that thing dry. Man, I'm honestly surprised with how this came out. This is such a cool look. I did not know that those colors was gonna make this type of countertop. Let me know in the comments below, did it come out how you guys expected? I hope you gained value from this content and from Stone Coat Countertops, you got this. We'll see you on the next video.